The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David! My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. All his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, my friends, in our gospel lesson today, Jesus is walking into the territory of Tyre and Sidon. He's going to an area that's filled with Gentiles, people who aren't like him, people who have a different history, people who don't worship like he worships, people who don't eat like he eats. So he's just also had a debate about eating and diet and cleanliness. So I can just about imagine that he wanted to be left alone to get to wherever he was going and to turn in for the night. Yet a woman called out to him, a Canaanite woman. The disciples are also already wary. A Canaanite? You mean those people? Oh, no. No, we are not to be associated with Canaanites. They're bad. They've always been bad. They're unclean. They don't worship our God. What could this woman possibly want? And yet there she is in the middle of the street, wailing rather desperately. Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David, help me. My daughter is not well. She's tormented by a demon. Well, Jesus doesn't say anything. He just keeps going. He leaves it alone. But there she is, still crying out, creating a scene. So Jesus pauses and he turns back to the woman. Now this is where we would expect Jesus, of all people, to understand where this woman is coming from. We'd expect the scene to play out like a cut-and-dried miracle story. You know, woman cries out, disciples scoff, Jesus heals, and we all learn a valuable lesson. But it doesn't go quite like that, my friends. Actually, Jesus comes off rather callously. He says, I'm here to feed the children of Israel, not the Canaanites, not you. It's not fair to take the children's bread and feed it to the dogs. Well, what is Jesus saying? You know, Christians have been debating this for centuries. Maybe Jesus was just grumpy. Maybe he was testing her. We could really tie ourselves in some pretty deep theological knots trying to find the answer. And maybe what matters most in the story isn't the initial rejection, but rather the action that follows. 
Let's remember that Jesus lived in a society that was essentially caught up in systemic racism. The Canaanites were considered less than, you know, you couldn't associate with them. And then women were even lower on the ladder of social acceptance. <clears throat> and Jesus says, I shouldn't throw the food to the dogs. Well, yes, Lord, replies the woman, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Even we Canaanites are entitled to the scraps, don't you think, she said. Well, Jesus wasn't racist, but Jesus lived in a system of racism. He lived in systemic racism. And so Jesus had his eyes opened in this encounter in our gospel lesson this, this day with the Canaanite woman. He had his eyes opened. And Jesus was moved by what the Canaanite woman said. He was moved by her passion, by her persistence, by her faith. Jesus' eyes were opened in a new way. And Jesus saw the justice to which she was speaking. Even dogs eat the crumbs, or in other words, all are entitled to equality. And so Jesus grants the Canaanite woman the mercy that she sought. He heals her daughter and restores their family. We come to understand again that all are equal in the eyes of God. And Jesus made that clear in his response to the woman. Well, today we hear this story from the perspective of living in the midst of a pandemic. And we also hear the story from the perspective of a society that is living in the midst of systemic racism. How are we called as followers of Jesus to care for one another in this pandemic? Pandemic. And how are we called as followers of Jesus to lift up the fact that every person, regardless of race, regardless of the color of our skin, is equal in the eyes of God? Well, the experience of the Canaanite woman shows us that faith is not always simple or straightforward. Speaking up for ourselves and others, calling out unfairness, Challenging the status quo, these aren't signs of weak faith or a lack of belief. No, Jesus pronounces this type of persistence, great faith, great faith indeed, speaking up. It's faith that John Lewis, the civil rights leader, would call good trouble. Speaking up when there is injustice when there are things that are not right. It's a faith that proclaims the gospel, faith that understands the need to stand up and speak up when we hear something that is not about equality, to stand up and speak up for equality, for justice. So where is the Canaanite woman today? Who is she? Perhaps she's part of the millions who lack food security. Maybe she's one of the millions who face daily violence and abuse. Perhaps she's one who lives with addiction or mental illness. She is most definitely affected by systemic racism. And what about the other side? As the Canaanite woman spoke up, have we spoken up regarding injustice, only to be hushed up, shooed away, or dismissed with callous comments when we speak up for those who are less fortunate than we are. You know, in this midst of our pandemic, and in, this midst, in the midst of living in systemic racism, racism, we live in a world that is hungry in so many ways. Not just physical hunger, but spiritual hunger also. People all around us long to be fed, to be fed with justice, to be fed with equality. 
for all to be fed in all the ways that we are needing. And so we all know that much of our Christian journey, our calling through our baptism, is to listen for those people calling out in pain or hunger or from injustice. And if you listening today are the Canaanite woman, if you're the one crying out in the streets to seemingly no avail, don't be afraid, take heart. Be persistent in seeking justice. It will not be in vain. Jesus, love and grace and mercy will win out. And so let's remember that after this encounter with the Canaanite woman, the next thing Jesus does in Matthew's story is to go down to the sea and feed 4,000 people from just seven loaves of bread and seven fish. God has this amazing ability to bring about change in the midst of the most astonishing ways through the most unexpected people. So God's work in our lives is always surprising us, always jarring us, always shaking up our world view. And we as followers of Jesus must show up and speak up for justice, for those who suffer, and God will do the rest. In the Canaanite woman, through her perspective, through her perseverance, through her persistence, through her outspokenness, we catch a glimpse of God's vision for our world. It's a world where grace comes to us in the most unexpected ways, where the smallest speak with the loudest voices and the powerful act with humility. It's a world where soup kitchens become lavish banquet halls. It's a world where hatred is replaced with love. It's a world where there is no longer abuse and violence. It's a world where all of us, each and every one of us, has a life based on equality and justice. And we are called to name the injustices, to name the inequalities, to name those ways in which people suffer. We are called to stand up and speak up and God in God's grace and mercy in Jesus will do the rest. God's mercy and love are for all people, all people. So let's give thanks as we hear this story for people like the Canaanite woman, for people who challenge us with the truth, help us to be ever mindful of the voices of others, to those who cry out for mercy, for peace, for justice, for equality. May we stand up against the systemic racism that is rampant in our world today. And so may our voice join the voices of all who seek justice and equality for all people. Amen.